First, we will take a look at Giga Shanghai and assess the impact of the coronavirus on Tesla's production in China. Then everyone is talking about a Twitter poll from Elon. So soon at Giga Texas or what? Then regarding Tesla, let's also take a look at the current status of full self-driving and their neural net, and a patent for a touchscreen integrated into the steering wheel. And apparently, soon there will be also a major update on Neuralink. Now regarding other very interesting developments, the UK for example wants to ban diesel and gasoline cars by 2035. Then the Electrify America charger network is growing fast and we got the first regulatory approval in the US for a self-driving delivery van. Quite some interesting topics this time, so stay tuned! The Tesla stock is crashing because of the coronavirus. The Giga factory is standing still and will be standing still for the whole year. The Model 3 sales in China will go to zero because of the virus. Because all people in China will transform into zombies. Because of the evil virus that was released by the Umbrella Corporation. And we are all gonna die soon anyway, so let's collectively panic. Or at least that is the impression we would get by reading too many clickbait headlines these days, right? Now the coronavirus outbreak certainly also has had an impact on the Gigafactory Shanghai. But should we also believe our favorite fudsters from CNBC, you know, the leading FUD news network? Certainly not, of course. Now first of all, it's quite funny that a 17% correction after a rise of hundreds of percent is called to crater nowadays. And also the last news we have from China is that the factory has now reopened on Monday the 10th and has started ramping up production of Model 3s back to the target of 3000 units per week. So it seems that all the doomsday end time fans will have to be disappointed again. Poor doomsday people. Waiting for doomsday since over 6000 years now and it just keeps getting postponed and postponed. So no, Tesla sales will not totally break in in 2020 because of the coronavirus in China. And we actually go as far as to say that the coronavirus will probably not even leave a small dent in Tesla's China sales for 2020. In other news, Elon last week made a poll on Twitter asking people what they think of a gigafactory in Texas. And a large majority thought that it would be an awesome idea. 80% were in favor. So what's behind this strategy? Why would Elon want to build a new gigafactory in the midst of the empire of oil? It actually would be a brutally smart move. Stepping forth with sudden unexpected swiftness like a radiant white flame into the heart of big oil, drawing away a lot of talented engineers from the dying oil companies, creating a lot of new jobs in the fast-growing industry sector, namely electric cars and renewable energy, helping to accelerate the transition away from oil to sustainability. And don't forget, last but not least, Cybertruck. As we found out ourselves last year when we were in Austin and Houston, everyone there was driving a pickup truck. Everyone! Like, if you're not driving a pickup truck there, you are almost committing a crime. Like, you need a special permit to drive a non-pickup truck there. Currently, Tesla is still not allowed to sell cars in Texas. With a gigafactory there, Tesla could directly sell their cars in the Lone Star State. And it would open the huge pickup truck market to Cybertruck, which is tactically extremely smart. So yeah, accelerating the demise of big oil, while at the same time sell a lot of Teslas in Texas. Sounds like a very good idea. And also, the people working on Starship at Boca Chica could now arrive there in style, you know? Talking of style, you have to take a look at this fan remake of Back to the Future with Tesla's Cybertruck instead of the DeLorean. It's freaking awesome! A must watch for every Back to the Future or Cybertruck fan. Link in the description below this video here. Now meanwhile, as we know, Tesla is of course as always ultra busy working on full self-driving and they will release the feature complete version of full self-driving sometime in the next few months. 
Now Elon has tweeted some further interesting details on why Tesla has such a huge head start compared to other car makers and why it's absolutely clear that Tesla will be the first ones by far to really reach full self-driving in the next years, so meaning level 4 autonomy. This is because of constant improvements with their AI neural net learning machine and the constant acquiring of new talent working on their full self-driving software algorithms. Plus Tesla has by far the largest car fleet of anyone pursuing autonomy with a fleet of almost 1 million cars on the roads and therefore they have just the biggest amount of data by far. And in the race to full self-driving data is king as we know. Therefore no one yeah, really absolutely no one can come even close to Tesla regarding full self-driving. And we actually really expect the full self-driving robotaxi fleet to become a reality within the next two years at the latest. Then we have an interesting new patent application from Tesla, showing us touch screens integrated into the steering wheel with haptic feedback buttons. This is highly interesting. And the drawing here is also very similar to the design sketch, which was leaked quite a while ago on electric. We are pretty sure that we will see such an interior design in Teslas in the next one or two years, meaning a bezel-less display with haptic feedback touchscreen controls on the steering wheel. Then another big disruption will be happening. And you know that our channel is all about disruptive technologies. It's of course the Brain Machine Interface. We truly believe it will be a huge new growth market in this decade, along with electric cars, cheap spaceflight and space colonization, biotechnology, nanotechnology, geoengineering, among many others. The list is quite long. But the one with the most disruptive potential is of course AI. It's so disruptive that it could in fact also disrupt us in a very, very unpleasant way, as we were warned time and time again in countless movies, some of which were actually excellent. Others? Mm, not so much. So Elon announced on Twitter that soon we can see new details on the Neuralink Brain Machine interface, which he showed us last year. And he says that the new iteration will be much more advanced. This is really intriguing and we cannot wait to learn more about it. Now in other very good news, the UK has decided to ban diesel and gasoline cars by 2035 and so joins a growing and growing list of countries in which diesel and gasoline cars will be banned in the next 10 to 20 years. Now of course Norway is as always leading the charge with a ban already by 2025, but many other countries follow closely with a ban already by 2030. Now the funny thing is that it probably won't even be necessary anymore. Let us explain. Now we time and time again reiterate that by 2022, 2023 at the latest, it will be cheaper to produce an electric car than a gasoline car. And when that moment comes, an extremely fast shift or flip will happen. So that gasoline or diesel cars won't even be produced anymore by 2030. So you won't even be able to buy them anymore by that year. So this is time and time again what many people fail to realize because we're talking about exponential growth here. This is how disruption works. It's exponential growth, not linear growth. That's why electric car adoption will go really insane this decade. And by 2030, fossil cars will seem like a dark and distant memory. Now they won't vanish completely, of course, because we still have horses around, right? So you will still be able to have them as old timers or as a collector's item, you know, for sentimental value, basically. And in developing countries, of course, they will be around longer. But still, the death of the gasoline and diesel car is a fact. It's a done deal. Not because all countries will ban them by 2030 or 2035, but no, because of simple economics. Then the Electrify America charging network seems to be growing. They announced last week that they will be opening their 400th charging station. It's the closest rival to the supercharger network so far. The US Alternative Fuels data center lists Tesla as having 756 
supercharger locations in the US. So one could think that this is not much more than electrify America. But wait, wait! Tesla has 7,264 charging stalls. Compared to electrify America, with only 1,776 stores. Wow, what a patriotic number of charging stores. Electrify America really deserves to have America in its company's name. Remember that Electrify America was established under a provision of the Volkswagen diesel settlement. Now let's just hope that they won't go the same way as Ionity. Because just a few weeks ago, Ionity decided to raise their prices to an insane 79 cents per kilowatt hour. So let's hope that Electrify America's prices will remain reasonable, which they currently still are, even though the prices are based on time unit, not kilowatt hours. The company says it hopes to have 800 charging stations by December 2021. By the way, Tesla now already has 1,784 superchargers worldwide. But it's a good sign that now we are getting more and more charging options. However, we don't think that anyone would be able to catch up with Tesla's supercharger network regarding density and ease of use in the next years, or ever for that matter. And then we'd like to mention a really amazing development regarding the regulatory approval of fully autonomous vehicles. The Silicon Valley startup Neuro has received regulatory approval from the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration NHTSA to deploy 5,000 of their driverless delivery vehicles in US cities. Now apparently Houston will be the first city to have a fleet of R2s as the driverless delivery robot is called with a friendly nod over to Star Wars in cooperation with Walmart and Domino's Pizza. Now this is an extremely important step forward regulatory wise for autonomous vehicles of any kind. So we hope that next time we visit Texas we can drive in a Cybertruck, visit the Gigafactory in Houston or Gigafactory Austin or Giga Dallas, wear some cool cowboy hats and of course cowboy shoes as is absolutely customary in Texas and order a pizza and get it directly delivered with a Neuro R2. Amazing times, dear viewers, in which we live amazing times. And it seems that a lot of cool stuff will be happening in Texas. Which is freaking awesome, because we really liked it there the last time, we have to say. And all these rapid disruptions happening at such a pace right now. Now Jishuan and me, we are of the opinion that you will not be able to recognize the world in 2030 anymore. We think that the technological changes which will happen from this year, so 2020 until 2030, will be much larger than the changes that occurred from 1980 until 2020 or even from 1970 until 2020. And in a very large part, thanks to Elon Musk, and his amazing disruptive companies Tesla and SpaceX who have now started again this rapid era of change and rapid era of innovation that will unfold now in the next decades. So do you really think we'll see a Gigafactory in Texas or did Elon just jest this jolly old fellow? And do you agree with us that by 2030 gasoline and diesel cars will have died out anyways? So no bans even necessary. And if you're new to this channel, we upload two videos per week on electric cars, space flight, and also many other disruptive technologies. So then be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And then I would say, see you next time.